Hi, I'm Hannah with Twerk All Your Bulls, Two Minute Tuesdays. I've got Steve Bradshaw here with me. Steve, thanks so much for coming. Thank you. Glad to be here. Okay, so Steve is your an, an author, and you live in Collierville, so we kind of wanted to talk about that. From what we know, you're Collierville's number one author. Thank you very much, <laughs> and we'll keep it that way <laughs> as long as we can. <laughs> So, Steve, I wanted to ask you a little bit about what brought you to Collierville. I know your past is a little bit interesting, which kind of led you into more of what gave you your, your meat and potatoes for your books, I guess. Right, right. Well, it, it began in Dallas, okay. and the forensic investigation work was there. Then I joined a company and went to the East Coast, mm -hmm. and we decided we want to come back south. Mm -hmm. And Memphis was as close to t Dallas as I could get <laughs> with Dow Corning corporation and so I joined them and went to work with them and before you know it I we lived in Germantown for a few years built a house in Collierville 1986 and we've been here ever since and we love it. Wow okay so 1986 you said before that you were um, starting a family in Dallas so you brought all the yeah. kids with you so yeah. they went through Collierville schools or they came out and went to where? Well actually we had three kids and we had uh, one in Dallas, one in Houston and one uh, in Memphis. Oh wow. And so our third, our son, was born in Memphis. And uh, they all actually went to uh, uh, the Houston school system. We were off uh, in Houston Downs on that, that uh, Frank Road mm -hmm. uh, off of, uh, uh, what's the name of that street? You know, the golf course. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I'm Houston, sure Houston yeah. Levy. Yeah, Houston Levy, yeah. hello. <laughs> and so we, and that particular area was a, went to the Houston school, so my daughter, my oldest daughter went, her first year was a Latin, and every year was her first year in high school. Oh, wow. Because it went one year, and then they added to the next year, then they added the next year, until they had four years, and then she graduated. There so, you go. And then my other daughter went through the process, too. They were cheerleaders and went down to Ole Miss after that mm -hmm. to be rebelettes. Oh, so. wow. It's a popular school. I know we've got some My son went to, Ole, went to Memphis so right. University. So um, you started writing after yes. you did the whole business corporation and everything yeah. else and all that. So with your forensics background, tell us a little bit, kind of so, I know Bluff City Butcher was the first you one you ever wrote, and that was the trilogy. Now this, right. Bluff City, that's got to be Memphis. Yes, it is. So it's mostly, so it's based in Memphis. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Uh, the first book I wrote was is Bluff City Butcher, the first book in a trilogy, uh, the Bell Trilogy. And it's about a serial killer in the Memphis area. He's an unstoppable uh, serial killer. Okay. And they bring in the world-renowned forensic investigator uh, who is the protagonist in many of my books, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Elliot Sumner, who is a gifted uh, investigator. So you have a genius psychopath being hunted by a genius forensic guy. Uh -huh. They are hunting and chasing each other across uh, Memphis. Uh, and, and there's a lot of areas that people recognize where there's homicides occurring and so forth. But when they finally, the, their paths cross on Mud Island, oh, wow. uh, they realize that they're connected and they carry a secret that people will kill for. And that launches the trilogy. Mm -hmm. And all I can tell you is everything you think you know is not what really happens until you get into this trilogy and see how it evolves into a family with a secret that becomes a global nightmare. And that's the trilogy that I wrote uh, when I, after I got through the businesses and so forth, and I wanted to write, and that's, uh, that's got it all started. Okay. So now I'm six books later. Yeah, so. <laughs> totally six books. I think with this one too, you mentioned, so this actually kind of touches in Collierville a little bit for yes, a brief minute. Yes, it does. Okay. Yeah, there's one, so. uh, one of the cases occur in Collierville, and, uh, I'm, and people will recognize the area, the street, the neighborhood, the Cairo PD shows up at the scene and everything else. So. Oh, wow. But we, we love Cairoville. I mean, we've been here for, like I said, since 1986. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, and so these are obviously a so forensic mystery thriller, yes. a little on the edge, a little, mm -hmm. uh, little bit more grown yeah. up. Yeah. More so from the, some of the stuff you've got to explain. They're to a little me. bit. <laughs> they're sometimes a little frightening, but I have gotten more experience as a writer. I've softened that a little bit uh -huh. because I have some people going, it scares me too much, I can't read it. <laughs> and I go, okay, I'm going to soften this a little bit for you, you know? Uh, because I saw Life Unedited. I worked 3,000 cases in Dallas, and, and every one of them began as a homicide. Right. And, and it was me and a, and a body, yeah. and I had to determine what happened. And so 
my writing is more about what I'm thinking mm -hmm. when I'm working that case okay. than what I'm actually seeing because you you start thinking, well, what if this serial killer did this and they're trying to fool me? Right. And then you conjure up all of this stuff mm -hmm. and that got stored away somewhere. Right. <laughs> and that's coming out of my books now. Well, there so. you go. <laughs> so here we are six books later, Terminal Breach that just went, yes. that actually just got released this week, uh, the 28th. August 28th. Okay. Yep. So, national release. Yep. National release. So this one, you said too, you brought you brought a character back. Yes, I did. So he's Dr. Sumner, after the trilogy, was uh, uh, went on rehab mm -hmm. because he had some issues. And I don't want to give too much away except right. that in Terminal Breach, someone uh, commandeers a missile silo and the President of the United States has to find out who was in that silo mm -hmm. before he makes a containment decision, which is a nuclear strike on North Dakota. Mm -hmm. And so he needs the top forensic guy to look at a blood trail leading to the silo to see if they can not identify who's there. Wow. to create options. So that's that's the, the race of the clock. Yeah. And the, the, the minor little issues that we're worried about. <laughs> you know. It, but it brings in the president and, and all his teams and all the things work behind the scene when there's a catastrophic thing developing and you don't want the news to hear about it <laughs> right. because it could launch a world war, you know, oh, wow. if it's handled the wrong way. So Wow, that's so exciting though. So that's a that's a fun book. That was really a fun book to write. Yeah. yeah so. Well, so you've got your kids, your wife, everything else. I think yes. too before you said y'all have actually done a little bit in Carver, your wife even. So yes. She was on the square before. Suzanne is my wife, and we uh, we were high school sweethearts and all of that. Got married. I was kidnapped, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we uh, five years later had our first child. Anyway, we came here, and she is into shabby chic and all of that, mm -hmm. and she opened up a store here called Not Too Shabby in mm -hmm. 2004 on the square. And did it for about four or five years and okay. had, had fun with it. And uh, now she's uh, kind of enjoying it. Uh, Sheffield's, she has a, a, a booth and it's less okay. work for yeah. her to, uh, you know, than running a store, right. which is a lot of work. That's know, awesome. As you can imagine. So, so that's what she's, uh, so we're, we're Collierville-ians. <laughs> I always go Collierville, you know, and they always make fun of me because I say it that way, but uh, we love it here. You know, yeah. we love it. One day, we just did a zero lot line, built a zero lot line house. One day, we wouldn't mind living somewhere near the square because we love the square. Oh, it's a coveted spot, I know, for oh, sure. Oh, it's just beautiful. And they're right. building nice houses over here, so. Right. Keep an eye open. Okay, well, Steve, I just I really appreciate you coming out and just talking to us about your books, about your life, and just how you kind of got Thank here. Thank you just very really much. I really appreciate it. If people want, they can go to my website, stevebradshawbooks.com. Mm -hmm. And where this is being promoted, they can read the first two chapters, you know, excerpts right now. Okay. And if they want to do a review for me, okay, there is a period of time where they can click on this thing and it comes to me and they will get a, uh, a number from me, a code uh, from us, and they can put that code in and get a free ebook. Okay. You know, Terminal Breach free. Again, it's if they're willing to review, right. you know, and uh, obviously those reviews are important to authors and to readers. Mm -hmm. So, okay. but it's available where Amazon is Nook everywhere, Barnes and Noble, wherever books are sold. So Steve, thank you so much for coming. Uh, it's been a pleasure just getting to talk to you and learn about these. And thank you again for our signed book copies of these. Yes, you're and, welcome. And um, yeah, this has been Two Minute Tuesdays with Tor Carvel and Steve Bradshaw. Thank you for having me. Thank